Now that our game's all set up, the last part of this project is to make sure the user can't enter invalid words. We're going to implement this as four small methods, each of which will do exactly one job. First, is the word original? Has it been used already? Like hello can't be used more than once. Is the word possible? I try to spell hello from irrigate. Not possible, shouldn't be allowed. And is the word real? Is it actually a real spelling in the language English? Now, if you pay attention, you might have realized that was only three methods, not four like promised. That's because the fourth method is there to make showing errors more convenient for us in code. Anyway, let's start with the first method. This will accept a string as its only parameter and return true or false, depending on whether the word has been used already or not. Now, we already have this used words array. That's what our list is showing. So we can pass our new word into the contained method for used words and send back the result directly. So we can say uh, here, func, tab please, <laughs> func is original, word string returns a bool, and we'll do used words dot contains word. So that, that was to return true if we've used the word already. This thing is called is original, so it means if we have not used it already, we'll just flip that around using not. And that's one method down already. So the words original if not used words contains that word. The next one's slightly trickier. How can we check whether a random word can be made from the letters of another random word? There are a few ways we could tackle this, but the easiest one is fairly simple. If we make a variable copy of the root word, we can then loop over each letter of the user's input word and see is that in our root word copy or not. If it is in there, we remove it from the copy so it can't be used twice and then continue. And if we get to the end of the user's word successfully, it means the word is good, we can continue. Otherwise, there's a mistake and we return false. So below here, we'll make a new method. Funk is possible. Possible word string returns bool. We'll get a copy of our root word called temp word. And it's variable here. So we can modify it as we're looping over the, their word. We then get each letter in the word the player entered and say, does that exist somewhere in our temporary word, our root word copy? We do that by saying, if let pause, find where it is, equals temp word, dot first index of a letter. So where is the first place that letter appears in temp word? If it exists and has a number, it'll be placed into pause. If this test fails, it means it wasn't actually found at all. If we find where it's first used in our root word, we'll do temp word dot remove at that position. We remove the letter they've used each time. So they can't use E three times, for example. If it wasn't found at all in that thing, else send back false. One of the letters they're spelling with was not in our root word, don't allow it. If we get to here, it means we've gone over every letter in the word they entered. We're done. It's a good word. We can return true like that. The final method is the hardest because we've got to use UI text checker from UI kit. Now, again, I've said before, in order to bridge Swift strings to objective C strings, we've got to make an NS range using the UCF 16 count of our string to handle things like Unicode and Japanese characters and more. This is not nice. I know it's not nice, but I'm afraid it's unavoidable until Apple cleans up these APIs for modern Swift. So our last method here will make an instance of UI text checker, responsible for checking our strings for misspelled words. We'll then make an NS range to scan the entire length of the string they entered, hello, for example, and then call range of misspelled word on our text checker so it looks for any wrong words. If that finishes, we get back a new NS range telling us where the misspelled word was found, but if the word was okay, there were no, no typos at all, then we'll get back NS not found. There were no misspelled words in that string. 
in which case the word is good. So we'll say the last method here, func is real, word string returns a bool, let checker be a UI text checker, let range equals an NS range of the entire length of our string. So that's location zero, start at the start. And for length, we'll do word.utf16.count. That's what the Objective-C underbelly expects to be given here. At our range, we'll then get misspelled, misspelled range, be checker, dot range of misspelled word in, and please use co-completion here, it helps a great deal. Uh, in our word, range that range, starting at position zero, wrap, do not wrap, false, language, en. And now we can read back from here the location of any misspelled words, which should be ns not found if the word is actually a real English word. So we'll do return misspelled range dot location is equal to ns not found. So if that is ns not found, this will be true. We're returning true. It's a real word. If it was not ns not found, it means there was a typo in there. It's a bad spelled word. Return back false. Now, before we can use these three, I want to add some more code to make showing alerts easier. First, we add some properties to control our alerts up here. We'll have at state private var error title is an empty string. At state private var error message again empty string and at state private var showing error is false. And now we can add a single method that sets title and message based on parameters it receives and then flips showing error to be true. So down here at our fourth helper method, func word error takes a title string and a message string. It assigns those straight to error title and error message and then sets showing error to be true. We want to now show the error because one's come in. We can pass those things directly, title, message, and error, straight to Swift UI by adding a new alert modifier below our on appear, which is here. So we want to have an alert. For our title, it's error title. Is it presented? Well, it's presented is dollar showing error. There's one button, which is simply OK. I'll make it a cancel button. So it's got a bit of bolding to it with no action code because it'll dismiss the alert by default. Then add a message below it saying text error message, whatever the problem was. We've done this a few times now. Hopefully it's pretty much second nature. At long last, it is time to finish our game right here where I have the extra validation to come. I want to go ahead and add calls to our methods. Is it original? Is it possible? Is it real? And if those fail, call word error and bail out. So we'll say guard is original. Word is our answer. Else we've got a word error. Word used already. Message be more original. And then return. So they can't use that word. It's not the first time they've tried it. Then we'll have guard is possible. Word is our answer. If that fails, we've got a different word error. Word not possible. Message is now, uh, you can't spell that word from uh, single quote, root word, single quote. And then return. So you can't spell hello from irrigate, whatever it is. And after that, we'll use uh, guard is real word, uh, our answer. Otherwise, again, a word error. Titles now is word not recognized. Recognized with a D, come on Hudson. Message will be, you can't just make them up. You know. And then return. And that's it. That really is it. If you go ahead and run the app now, you should find it refused to let us use words that are impossible or duplicates or 
can't be spelled or who knows what, you know, any invalid word is no longer allowed. For example, if I had uh, L-O-S-G, I can spell it from L-O-S-G, but it'll say, whoops, it's not recognized, it's not a real word. Whereas if I had logs, that is allowed. Uh, similarly, if I had a word that's not possible, um, let's say songs doesn't work because there's only one S here and there's two here, it will complain. You can't spell that from prolonged. doesn't work. So that, that is, uh, is real and is possible. Is it original? Let's just try logs again. Boom. So all three errors work now. Thanks to those tests we've added. And that's another app done. Good job.